Al here and uh, time to talk about some more lawn care stuff. Now today I'm using my Chicago accent because what I'm going to speak to you about is something that needs to be delivered with force and so I'm using my Chicago accent to try to deliver the message with some force to you. Anyway. What's up y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So I'm coming to you from my podcast studio. Really, it's my podcast setup because my studio for everything I do is my garage over by there. But I'm coming to you in this setup today because that's exactly what I want to talk about coming out of the gates here. I will timestamp you to get right to the tips if you want to do that. But the first thing I wanted to do is encourage you to check out my podcast. If you're anything like me before you discovered podcasts, and my podcast was not the first podcast that I ever discovered, I actually discovered podcasts podcasting through Joe Rogan. And uh, I will tell you that ever since then, I've been hooked on podcasts. A lot of you guys might be the same where I get emails like this every single week where people are like, Alan, I never really listened to a podcast before, but because it's you, I checked out your podcast and I really enjoy podcasts now. I'm kind of hooked on podcasting and I can tell you that I was in that same place. I never listened to podcasts. It wasn't a thing of mine. It just I'll tell you why I never listened to podcasts is because I don't have an Apple phone. You can see that I use a Mac computer here, but when it comes to phones, I've always been an Android guy. And so the name podcasts just totally shut me out because I felt like it was just something that was not in my purview because I'm not an Apple guy. But in general, podcasts, it's really like old time talk radio. If you're an old fan of talk radio, then you will like podcasts. And if you're a fan of lawn care and lawn care tips, then I hope that you will like my podcast. And I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a try. That's a pretty hard pitch, I know, but it's free. And for some of you, you will like the fact that it's just real time tips. Just It's just tip after tip after tip. Now, I do give you uh, quite a bit of information up front. Usually, I try to do like an opening monologue. But the idea of the podcast is that I speak in such a way and I speak in such a cadence very similar similar to this, that it keeps moving, it keeps your interest, it's not boring, but it's also something that you can absorb frictionless. A lot of times, one of the reasons people like podcasts is because you can put it on in the background and you can do other things, you can multitask, where with video, you need to be using your sight and your sound, and it's really hard to triple multitask at that point. So podcasts offer you that frictionless experience. The other thing is a lot of people listen to podcasts in their ears on headphones, which is where it differs from traditional talk radio. So most people nowadays are listening in headphones, so it feels like you and I are having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. So that's the reason why you should check out podcasts. And now the reason that you should check out my podcast, which we do have available here on YouTube, for those of you who do prefer to keep the sight and sound, it's pretty much just this it and me annoyingly shifting back and forth because I have those kind of mannerisms. But if you do want to check out the podcast that way, it's full length. It's an hour and 21 minutes. And I just answer the most frequently asked questions that I'm getting every single week. Now, those questions come in in a lot of places, but the main place, and you can ask your own question if you want, is to call in on our LCN tips line. And it's 833-LCN-TIPS, 833-LCN-TIPS. If you call in there, you can leave a message and leave your question. And then I end up playing those on the podcast. And sometimes the same one will come in multiple times. So we'll pick one, we'll put it up and we'll answer the question. The other thing that we are doing though, because some of you don't want a full hour and 20 minutes or, or however long of content. So then the other thing we're doing is I've got Ben the Lawn Guardian, shout out to him that's working with me. He chops them up for me and then we chop up the questions. So then they're like five to six minute segments or because you guys know I get a little bit too detailed sometimes. The segments end up being 20 minutes, but either way it chops it up. And then it's like, how do I get rid of spring grub worms? You know, should I seed in the spring? What is this problem grass coming in my lawn? Those are how we title those. So that way it's easily searchable for you to find the library and that way you can get right to the tips you want that way. So I just wanted to offer you that because as you know here on this channel, I try to be a little bit more entertaining. I do some fun editing and that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be doing a hybrid between my podcast as you've already seen here and then some of the fun editing that we do. And all of the video footage that you see here, or at least a good majority of it is from my Wednesday weeknight lawn work, hashtag that weeknight lawn work. And then it's also from my Saturday full service mo, as well as a little bit that I did this morning here on Sunday before I went to church. So that's what all the footage is entailing and that's what it's talking about. And we're gonna talk about the way that I mow my lawn.
And so what we're gonna talk about is the way that I kind of go about mowing my lawn because it's kind of interesting if you look at that original video that I played in the very beginning, that that is, and funny enough, I was coming to you from my garage then and trying out my Chicago accent even way back then in 2009, that's 2009. Back in 2009, I was the lead ops manager at a Merrillville, Indiana branch of True Green. That was over there in Merrillville, Indiana, right there in Northwest Indiana, south of Route 30. Shout out to my Lake County peeps up over by there. But anyway, I was doing that back then and trying to talk a game or whatever, you know, figure out my style. So it's fun to watch those videos. I'll link that in the eye up here for you. Dead on. So I always say weed whack first, then mow, of course, and then finally edge. Now, I told you in a previous post that edging is really what's going to give you the difference. It's going to give you that nice straight up and down look all the way down your curbs and sidewalks. And the reason that we edge last is because if we edge before we mow, and then the mower's gonna run over when you're going, you know, from, from one part of the lawn to the other, across the sidewalk, across the driveway, or making turns. You can actually take that nice edge and you can push it down. And so, the way we wanna do it is we wanna go weed whack, then use the mower, and then use the edger to do the final cleanup. And then, of course, at the end, we do the blowing. So, that's how I do it. Now, if you do it different, feel free to argue with me down below. Hey, I'm all about the argument. But that's just the reason that I do it the way I do, and I hope that you guys, you guys will do it too. But I talked about the order in which you mow. And so I think it'd be fun for us to go back now and kind of look through that because I may have developed some better techniques over the years as well as I've also definitely developed some better equipment. And that's one of the things I wanted to bring up here for you right now. Oftentimes I'll see, you know, sometimes around online or in our Facebook group even or whatever, somebody will post a picture of their particular tools that they're using, their blower, their weed whacker. And there are some people, you know, sometimes those are not the most expensive. Sometimes they're actually what you might call cheap type equipment. And I'll sometimes see people that'll, that'll make snide comments about that or hammer on it. And I always try to get in there when I can and say, hey, you know, everybody's got to start somewhere. Everybody is, you know, working along a certain budget. Everybody, you know, maybe that guy spent more money on his mower and not so much on his weed whacker or his blower. And I kind of remember that and I kind of feel where you're at. And I actually have a record of it online. If you look at that old video there, um, back then I was using a Lawn Boy, which was a great mower. It, I don't remember the model number or anything like that, but it had this thing on there called Sensa Speed. And somebody in one of my last videos uh, told me that, hey, Alan Toro's personal pace started out with that lawn boy technology and sense of speed and that makes a lot of sense and those of you who have more information on this comment below because i think it's kind of cool like like a lawn tool history can kind of be kind of neat so if you work for toro or lawn boy comment below too but what i found is is somebody said that that sense of speed was like the precursor to what now is our personal pace which you guys know i really really like on a mower and I'm gonna talk about the, one of the drawbacks to personal pace later as we talk a little bit more about mowing. But either way, you can see that that lawn boy had that sense of speed on there. And it's been in a lot of my other videos too. One of my more famous lawn striping videos uses that particular lawn boy with sense of speed. And to this day, I will tell you that is the favorite mower of mine that I've ever owned. It had really fat tires on it that I liked the stance of it. You all hear me talk about mowers and their stance. You know, like my Honda, for example, I think it's cool. It looks like an Indy car when it's, you know, set low. And I like the stance, though, of that lawn boy. That was pretty cool. So anyway, that was the mower I had. And that was not a cheap one. I think I paid $350 for that, and I don't remember where I bought it. But I also had this John Deere edger. I've always used a blade edger, and back then I was using a John Deere. However, it was a John Beer, John Deere, John Beer, <laughs> like com combination system, similar to the PAS 225 that I'll show you later today that I'm using. But it was a combination, and I remember the weed whacker portion had broken, and so all I had was the edger attachment, but that's what that was. It was a gas-powered John Deere edger, but it also was a combination. That was not cheap either. Now here's the thing though, is I had a really cheap weed whacker. This was, I had been living in this house here. This was my Northwest Indiana house. We had it built and we moved in in the end of 2004. I seeded it in 2005. And so I really didn't have a decent lawn there until 2006. So this was about my third year of working on the lawn here. But either way, I had bought a gas powered weed whacker and I looked on Amazon and it's not in my history, but I bought this gas powered weed whacker and it was the cheapest one they had. It was $30. I remember this, $30 for a gas powered weed whacker. It's 
It's got a little uh, bent shaft on there. Piece of garbage. It was terrible, but it's what I had back then. And then I had an electric home light blower, a corded electric blower. And I remember I got it on sale. This was in Northwest Indiana. I got it on sale one year right after Christmas. It was $19 for this corded home light blower. And that thing worked really well for me, just obviously pulling cords. So that kind of shows you where I started equipment. Now you're going to see where I'm at with equipment now as we move forward today, because I want to talk about the fact that it's just fun to upgrade your equipment over the years. And no matter where you start, just know that that's not where you're going to finish, that you're going to get better equipment. You're going to upgrade over time. And part of that is, is as you develop this hobby of lawn care and it becomes more important to you, then you will invest in equipment that either makes the job easier, gets the job done better, gets the job done quicker. A lot of things improves your efficiency. You will optimize things over time. And that's cool that not only do you have to grow a lawn, but you can also grow your equipment suite right along with it. So let's go right into the mowing and then we'll go back to a little bit of the equipment because that'll be fun. Now one of the guys in the Facebook group was asking about mowing and, and do you take your mower when you're mowing around edges and stuff? Do you hang the mower out into the street? You put the wheels out into the street or do you stay up into the lawn? And that got me to thinking a little bit about an old that old video we're talking about here, which is the what order do I mow in? Do I weed whack first? Do I edge first? Do I blow first? And I figured it would be fun to talk about that video and talk about some of the ways that I'm mowing now and then see what you guys think and tell you some things that I've learned over the years. So in that video, what I was telling you I did was I would weed whack first, then I would mow, then I would edge, and then I would blow. It was obvious that blowing comes last, right? And I understand that. And I still do that today, but I do a little bit different of a variation of it. The reason that we did it in that order though was we would weed whack, so that way everything that got weed whacked down and fell over would get caught up and picked up during the mowing. And then the reason we edged last is because we didn't want to run over the edges with the mower and crush them down. We wanted them to stand up super tight and super tall like soldiers. And if you did that first and then mowed over it, you might have to run over that edge and ruin it. So that's why we would edge last. But one of the things I found, especially with St. Augustine grass, and it gets a lot of really thick stolons, if, if, especially during the rainy season, even if you're on the two week time per week mow that I talk about mowing twice a week, you'll still find that those stolons, they come in so hard and so thick in the rainy season that actually if you edged last and cut all those off and blew them back up into the lawn, then they junk up your beautifully cut lawn. Now I'm showing you some video here, but that video is from overgrown mowing that I did in the back on the Scotts Pro Vista St. Augustine grass. And I don't know if we'll get to that. We might get to that a little bit more here in this video, but I do have an update coming there. But it does still illustrate the point that sometimes the stuff gets carried away. These thick stoloniferous grasses that we have here, especially our alpha male grasses like the St. Augustine grass. By the way, I did want to say, I know that it's very popular around the community to say that Alan Hayne, the lawn care nuts, hates Bermuda. I just want you guys to know something. I don't hate Bermuda, and I don't hate you, and I don't hate your Bermuda lawn. None of that. The only Bermuda that I hate is the individual Bermuda that is invading my lawn. If Bermuda is invading other people's lawns, I don't even hate that Bermuda. No problem. In fact, I love that Bermuda because that secures my domination. But at this point, I may not be dominating in that arena. So the only Bermuda that I hate is the physical, actual soldiers that have invaded my lawn. I do not hate anybody else called Bermuda. Please get that straight and please understand it. If you have a Bermuda lawn, I love you. I was just thinking about this some more. This is my beautiful Pro Vista, sorry, Scott's Pro Vista St. Augustine grass, so it won't get invaded with Bermuda. Not sponsored, just mentioning a fact here. But one thing to think about is my northern friends with cool season grass, you have something similar here in that when you guys get bent grass invading your lawn, that's a weed to you. But some golf courses value bent grass for the beautiful fairways that it can make. It's the same exact thing. It's all about the individual and not the group as a whole. That's how you look at the thing. Hate the player, not the game. Get up. So what I've been doing now is I've actually been weed whacking first. And yes, I do understand where my mower will go. That's part of learning your land. A lot of people will say, well, if you weed whack first, what if you don't weed whack far enough out in certain areas? What if you miss a spot that your mower can't get to? Then you have this area where it's weed whacked and not cut and then the mower cut because it couldn't get there, you know, you didn't maneuver right. 
Well, part of learning your land and part of weed whacking your ground for long periods of time is, is you know the limitations of your mower and then you know where you have to compensate with your weed whack. So that's part of learning your land. You will get better at it over time. This also does apply to equipment. When you guys first get certain equipment, you're going to you're gonna have to learn the equipment, how to use the equipment to the optimum way instead of just saying at first, I don't like this. I don't like the way it works. And I, I'm, I have a tendency to do that too. But what you got to realize is that you need to adapt a little bit to the equipment. You need to learn the equipment over time. As you learn your land, you learn the equipment and how you can make those two things work together to give you the optimum results as well as do it in the most efficient amount of time. So what I've been doing now though, because of that stoliniferous problem, is I've actually been doing my weed whack like we talked about, and then I mow a strip around the outside of everything. I go ahead and do the one strip around the edges to go ahead and pick up all the weed whack stuff just to make sure everything looks good and clean there. And then I do a mow along the edges where I'm gonna have to use the blade edger, and you can see me doing that here. And I'm mowing that one strip, maybe two, and then I go back with my edger, and I edge straight up and down, and I knock it out. Then I go back with my blower and I blow that back up into the lawn. Now I've still got the mower out. I haven't gone too far. Now I go back and just do a second pass right over those original passes that I did and just clean everything up, just suck it up. The other thing though that this extra strip does for you is it now allows you to mow inside of the lawn without running over the edges, without running over your nice clipped edges. So let me review how I'm doing it now. I weed whack first, then I mow a nice edge around everything or a nice clean, tight pass around everything. Then I edge, then I blow everything back up in, then I go back and clean up that pass, and then I make all my further passes inside the lawn so I don't crush down my edge and it still stands up straight. That's how I roll. Then I blow a final blowing. And by the way, you'll also find that if you do the double blowing like that, you blow after the edge, then you mow and you blow again, you'll actually get things a lot cleaner that way because you actually are blowing twice. So that's always a good thing to do as well, is to do that final blow just to clean everything up. Now, I wanna go back to the other point that we were talking about or what the guy asked in Facebook, and that was really him asking about, hey, do you hang your wheels out in the street or not? And at first, in the, if you go back to the Facebook post, you guys can find it, I said, no, I keep my wheels inside the lawn. But then as I was mowing, I was thinking, no, no, I don't. I put them outside. You can see me doing that here. I just don't think I could get a clean cut. And I try to do it here along the sidewalk where you see here. I can't get a clean cut keeping the wheels inside the lawn. It just, there's anytime I have to hit a turn or a curve or anything, I'm off. So I, I always hang my wheels out into the street or out into the curb or into the sidewalk or whatever I'm going by. So you guys tell me what you do. I think it would be, you know, dependent on your situation, you know, if you have a curb there, then you wouldn't be able to do that. You wouldn't be able to hang it over a curb necessarily. So then you'd have to probably do a little bit more weed whacker work or maybe use a different, I mean, I don't know. You guys have to tell me how you kind of overcome different things. But I thought if a lot of people asked about that, how do you mow and what order do you do it in and how do you keep from crushing your edges? I figured that this would be helpful to more than just one person. Hey, now one other thing I did want to bring up, and this is important because you guys know when I talk a lot about mowers, I talk about a leisurely mow versus an active mow. So a leisurely mow is what I get with the Toro Time Master when I've got that on my personal pace. I've also got a Toro Super Recycler that has personal pace, and that is more of that leisurely mow. You kind of just walk into it and it just moves, and you really learn how to sit back and enjoy it. And by the way, there is nothing better for me with that personal pace than to be on a wide open run in my lawn as straight as I can get it where I'm just going and I'm just leaning back and enjoying the mow. There's nothing better than that. But I've noticed though, when it comes to tight spaces, that actually makes the mower a little bit harder to maneuver, whereas the active mow, the Honda, which has these push buttons kind of with my thumbs, and because this is on my video YouTube channel, I can show you that here, that active makes me be up on it. It makes me have to, it gives me more ability to steer for example. So going around tight turns, I can boom, zoom in, zoom out. Going around in circles is much easier because I'm up on it and I'm driving it. Whereas with the personal pace, I'm more kind of hanging back. I'm kind of riding dirty, riding low, right? But again, with that Honda, I'm up on it and I'm pushing it. And so it makes turns easier. So that's something to think about. When you look at a mower, do you want the leisurely mow? I guess most of what I mow is open spaces. And I never really realized it until I started mowing again in the back regularly here on my Pro Vista that actually I would rather have an active mow back there. Now, just so you guys know, going forward, my back lawn is the Scott's Pro Vista, and that is getting mowed at three and a half inches. I've got a full video coming up on that. I have sprayed it with glyphosate now, killed out all the invading Bermuda and all that stuff, as well as other weeds and thistle. I'll be doing a video on that to kind of give you an update there and show you how that went. Mm-hmm.